there. Welcome to the Scratch Made Life Kitchen. My name is Kim and today we're going to talk about milk in the cheese making process. Now in front of me you see raw cow's milk. Raw milk is the best milk you can use to make cheese with. We are really fortunate here at Scratch Made Life to be partnered with Valley Milk Simply Bottled out of Modesto, where they produce raw cow's milk, raw goat's milk, and raw, raw sheep's milk. So it's just been wonderful, 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 wonderful. Now, why is raw milk so wonderful, Kim? Raw milk is straight from the animal. Nothing has been done to it. It hasn't been processed in any way. So, the good bacteria, the proteins, everything we need to make a good cheese is intact. It hasn't been messed with. So that's why raw milk is the best milk. Now I'm very aware that a lot of people can't get raw milk. It's not legal in a lot of states and in a lot of countries. So what is your next choice? Well, your next choice would be milk that's been pasteurized. And the pasteurization process is a process in which they use temperature to destroy bad bacteria. So they heat your milk up, usually to right around 168 degrees, and then they cool it back down, and then they bottle it. That's pasteurization. Now, in the process of destroying that bad bacteria, the pasteurization process also destroys some of the good bacteria that we need for the flavor in our cheese, as, long as, some of the, as well as some of the structures that we need for a good curd. We can use calcium chloride to repair some of that damage, and we'll talk about that more in another video. So there is coming back from that. So pasteurized milk, that's your second choice. Pasteurized, homogenized. What's homogenized milk? Homogenization is simply the process of taking the cream that's at the top of your milk, and you'll see that in raw milk or milk that's just been pasteurized. You'll see it's a little creamy color up here, and then it looks a little bit more like skim milk down here. That's because we haven't homogenized it, which is shaking the milk to combine the cream and the liquid and making it stay together. So in the homogenization process, it makes it stay together. So it's doing a little bit more damage to the integrity of our milk when you homogenize it. Now the other process done to milk is something called ultra-pasteurized milk. Stop if you're losing interest at all and pay attention to this. One of the nevers, one of the few nevers in cheese making is Never use ultra pasteurized milk to make cheese. It will not work. Save yourself the frustration. Do not buy ultra pasteurized milk and try to make cheese out of it. It won't work. There is no way we can repair the damage done because they heat it up, they cool it off, they heat it up and they cool it off again. So say it with me. Never use ultra pasteurized milk to try to make cheese. Read your labels real carefully because a lot of organic milk is ultra pasteurized because it tends to stay on the shelf a little bit longer. And that's the goal of ultra pasteurization is to allow for a longer shelf life. Now, how do I know if this milk has been homogenized, pasteurized, da 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 da? Has to be on the label. At least in the United States, it does. More times than not, it's on your nutritional label, usually at the very top or at the very bottom. It's usually pretty pronounced, but every now and then you have to really hunt for it. Um, but look for that. So to recap, the best kind of milk to use for cheese making is raw milk because it's unprocessed, followed by pasteurized milk. And if you don't have access to pasteurized milk, homogenized, pasteurized. And ready? Never use ultra pasteurized milk to try to make cheese with. It won't work. It won't work. Ultra pasteurized milk will not work for cheese making. Okay, I think I've made my point on that one. Now, the three main types of milk, animal milk, that we find, at least here in the United States, are cow's milk, by far is the easiest to find, followed by goat's milk and sheep's milk. And there are some differences. Cow and goat's milk, um, perform real similarly. Um, sheep's milk, however, oh my goodness, it's a cheesemaker's dream. So in cheese making, you're going to get about a pound of cheese from a gallon of milk. That's pretty easy to remember. Um, but that varies. But with sheep's milk, you can sometimes get as much as two pounds 
of cheese from a gallon. And that's because the structure is so much tighter. Um, it's a lot like human milk actually, which if you have problems digesting regular milk, sheep's milk is a great alternative, uh, as well as something called A2. Now that brings up another thing, A2, you're starting to hear A2 a lot more. What is A2? A2 is a cow's milk that's easier for people to digest. It's a protein. And I'm not gonna get too technical in this video. I don't wanna lose your interest, okay? Um, but you can still make cheese with it. So if you have A2 milk that is either raw, pasteurized, or pasteurized, homogenized, it will work for cheese making. There's no changes you need to make to your recipe or anything. So you can use A2 milk in the cheese making process. Now, question I get a lot is, can I freeze my milk? I have a friend with a cow. She just gave me like six gallons of milk. I can't use it all and I, I need to freeze it. Yes, yes, you can freeze your milk. A lot of discussion about this. Yes, and I'm talking to you from experience. Just be aware that when you freeze cow's milk and goat's milk, it tends to reduce your yield a little bit. So let's say you're using a milk and you tend to get 15 ounces of cheese to a gallon of milk. You might expect to get 13 or 14 from it if you have to freeze it, but you can freeze it. It will form a curd. It will give you a cheese and your cheese will taste the same as if you hadn't frozen it. It just might be a little smaller. Okay. Now with sheep's milk, you can freeze it without any concern about um, losing yield on it. You won't lose the yield. Your structure doesn't get damaged at all by freezing it. As a matter of fact, with sheep's milk, you might have the opposite problem. And that is, I find that because of all the good bacteria in sheep's milk, if I leave it in the refrigerator for more than five or six days after it's been put in the bottle, the good bacteria tends to eat some of the things that I need for a structure of a good cheese. So I don't get as good a cheese with it, but I can freeze it, put it on the counter overnight, and then use it the next morning, even if the use by date was a month ago. So you can use sheep's milk frozen um, and not lose any yield or any kind of integrity in your structure. Whereas you're, you are gonna use, lose a little bit in cow's and goat's milk, but you could still use it. Now, Kim, I've heard they bleach milk. No, they do not bleach milk. Are you ready? They do not bleach milk, okay? Um, I heard that and I, I bought into it for a little while and I apologize to those who I pass that information on because it's wrong. Milk that is super, super white compared to milk that's creamy in color, it's diet that creates that change. So if you have cows that are mostly grass fed, but it's winter and they have to be hay fed, you're gonna see that milk color change when they're on the hay, it's kind of a whiter color. And when they're on the grass, it's usually a creamier color. So no, milk is not bleached. The color change is due to the diet of the animal. Okay, to recap, cheese making for milk or cheese, and sorry, milk in the cheese making process is the most important ingredient. Go out in your community, find the milk that works the best for you. It may take a little bit of experimentation, um, may take a little bit of time, but you will find a milk that you like to use. We are fortunate here at Scratch Made Life to have a partnership with a raw milk producer in Valley Milk Simply Bottled out of Modesto. If you run into milks or any problems, please feel free to leave a comment for me. I'll get back to you as soon as I possibly can. Just know that milk in your cheese making process is the most important thing and it is worth the investment in time to find the one that works for you. Raw milk is the best, followed by pasteurized milk, followed by milk that's been homogenized and pasteurized. And I'm gonna leave you with this. Never use ultra pasteurized milk to try to make cheese. It won't work. Happy cheese making. Thanks for joining me. Take care. Bye now.